Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and Module 5 Equilibrium and Acid Reactions. Uh, this is video number 6 where we start to look at um, how we can change what's happening in an equilibrium system. So we're going to focus on the effect of temperature first of all. In order for us to start analysing these equilibria, what we need to do is realise that there are certain factors that we can change in with respect to each of these different equilibrium systems that we've been examining in order to see what happens as a result. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be invoking Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle says when a system's in equilibrium, uh, sorry, when a system in equilibrium is subject to a change in concentration, temperature, external pressure, or some other factor which upsets the equilibrium, the system reacts in such a way as to counteract that change. Basically, if you do something to a system, the system tries to shift in order to undo that change, to reverse what it was that you did. There are three factors which are very important in equilibrium systems, the first of which um, I have already mentioned, temperature, and that's one that we will have a look at in this particular video. Uh, the concentration uh, of both reactants or products can be important, as well as the pressure and uh, for gases, the volume specific, specifically relating to gases that are present. When we talk about equilibria, we tend to talk about two different types of equilibria. Uh, homogeneous, these are often easier to um, deal with because, say, all species are gases. There's ways that we can deal with the fact that all the species are gases. Um, and look at them both in terms of their concentration and their pressure or volume. Um, but occasionally we have a heterogeneous equilibria. So something where maybe we warm a solid, the solid uh, turns into um, perhaps another solid and or liquid and or gas. Uh, and then we have a combination of different types of states of matter as well as um, different substances being produced. And this can um, sometimes make things a little bit easier, uh, sometimes it makes things a little bit more complex. So we're going to look at a range of different types of equilibria and how we analyse each of these, particularly in terms of the effect that a change in temperature, concentration or pressure will have on the system and how the system is going to respond as a consequence. So let's start to focus in specifically on what happens when uh, we start changing the temperature. So here is our cobalt chloride equilibrium. And we've said that there are two versions of cobalt chloride, a pink version and a blue version. The pink version is the hydrated form. We have cobalt chloride hexa. 6 hydrate uh, as our product and for our reactant we have cobalt chloride that's the anhydrous version and uh, and water molecules. One way we can shift the equilibrium um, back in this direction is to add uh, heat energy. When we add heat energy, what the heat energy is going to do is to heat those uh, little uh, water molecules that are distributed through the solid. Uh, they'll actually drive them out and it means that we're going to shift the equilibrium in the reverse direction. That is, we're going to talk about uh, favouring the reactant side or shifting to the left. Okay. Um, these are the terms that we're going to be using and it's very important that you start to um, describe situations uh, in terms of the change and the Le Chatelier's principal consequence which is that shift back to um, try and counter the change. So here's a second example. This is nitrogen dioxide as a uh, reactant and dinitrogen tetroxide tetroxide 
oops, we'll just try that again, tetroxide as a product. This is a an exothermic reaction as energy is a product. And if energy is a product, then we have an exothermic reaction or a delta H is negative. Now what happens if we add heat? If we add heat energy, we are increasing the energy of the system, which means that this component gets higher. Le Chatelier's principle tells us that the shift is going to counter the change. So what we want to do is we want that to become, oops, we want that to become lower. We make that lower by shifting to the left. If we shift to the left, then we're going to produce more of the dinitrogen tetroxide and our, uh, our gas mixture will become slightly browner or darker in colour. If we were to cool the mixture, then we're actually going to be removing energy. So in this stage, we're going to be removing energy from the system. So the system will then, according to Le Chatelier's principle, shift in order to counter the change. That is to produce more energy. And as a result, uh, the solution will favour the, uh, sorry, the mixture the equilibrium system will then favour the formation of the product or shift to the right and will increase the amount of the dinitrogen tetroxide. And of course, that means that the uh, mixture will become paler, less brown uh, as more of the colourless uh, component is formed. This is the way that we go about trying to um, analyze different equilibria in terms of the change that's being um, affected on the system and how the system is going to respond as a result in order to counteract that change. We'll have a look at a couple more examples of uh, for concentration and for pressure in subsequent videos. Thanks for watching.